we will be talking about Snake Eyes today, focusing only on versions 1 and 1 1.5 from 1982 to 1983. Alright, so now we are going to talk about each modern iteration of the 1982-1983 Snake Eyes design. Starting with the earliest and working our way to the latest. And for each mold we will start with the earliest version of that mold, the original use, and then talk about each subsequent use, including quick overviews of ones that only partially used it. So we will start with the version 28 from the 2007 box set, the very first modern Snake Eyes. Now, I'm not going to give a lot of background information or biographical information on these characters, because I feel like if you're watching this video, you probably already know who they are, and a lot of other YouTubers do do that. I will, however, just give a quick overview of what we knew about each character when the original version of the design we're looking at first came out. So, 1982-1983 Snake Eyes. That is not a whole lot. He is the mysterious man in black that everybody wanted, and a lot of kids couldn't get because he sold out. He is the silent commando of the G.I. Joe team, going into the file card, proficient in all sorts of small arms and explosives, and in 12 different fighting styles. By the end of the first year of comics, thanks to his time in the brainwave scanner, we did know that he lost his ability to speak and mutilated his face in an accident on an early training mission where he saved Scarlet from a burning, crashing helicopter. And we also learned that he had ninja training. If you only watch the cartoons, you didn't even know that much. So, this figure is very faithful to the vintage, with the biggest difference being that it is dark gray instead of all black. Otherwise, it is the vintage figure with the details enhanced. He does also have a few other pops of color, and we'll just work our way down now and compare and contrast, and we'll look at those. So he does share the same basic head design as the vintage. He has the hard face mask with the ventilation holes, the goggles, which here are, are painted black. And he does have these seam lines running over his head, and also going around his head, he has this detailed strap for his goggles. Coming down to the strap... Uh, his web gear. You can see that he has the pouches on each side, and here of course it's a separate piece and on the vintage it was molded detail. And then on his right side he has the grenade, although it's painted green. On the left side there was a knife on the vintage, but here it's just detail of the web gear strap. And then popping out to look at his arms, he does have a pouch on each arm. Uh, they're on the side of his arms, like the 1982 version. The 1983 version brought them around to the front. He is also wearing his sweater, as can be seen on his cuffs and his collar. And then, if we look at the belt, which on the original was part of the waist piece, here it's part of the web gear. He has a pistol holster, which is new, and he has a canteen and a pouch. All of this is new. But for the belt itself, it is otherwise identical to the 1983 version because it has four ridges. The 1982 only had three. And then here this waist piece is another way he's similar to the vintage in that this is called affectionately a diaper crotch. A lot of the early figures had this large crotch piece and it was disliked because it prevents the figure from being able to sit down or move its legs as well. And so like the 1982-1983 figures it was later updated in running changes and later uses of the mold, and this is true for other figures in the line, to a much slimmer piece that allowed for sitting and other things. So, similar to how in 1982-1983, the first figures had those big heavy waist pieces that were changed to much slimmer ones in 1983. Coming down to his legs, we have his knife sheath. Here on the vintage, there were two pouches, but there is a pouch here on the front that alludes to those pouches. On this side, we have this silver device. On the vintage, it was a bomb. It may well be a bomb, we don't know. Coming down to his lower legs, where on the vintage, it was pretty much smooth with just a few details to suggest boots. Here we have all of this folding increasing for the lower pant legs, and we have highly detailed boots with lots of texture and detailed laces. Now, let's look at articulation. 
He has, for his ankles, swivel and hinge, double jointed knees. His legs come out about that far to the front, that far to the side, and just a little to the back. Coming up to his arms, his swivel wrists. He has a single jointed elbow, comes up about that far. And down about that far if you want him to have a broken elbow for some reason. His shoulders swivel all the way around and come up about that far, which is quite decent. He has torso swivel and his head rotates 360 and moves up and down just a bit. For accessories, we have, starting with the two that the Vintage had, we have his explosives pouch. It has this very nice tampo, uh, these very well-detailed, well-sculpted ties that are painted green, lots of texture on the bag itself, lots of details on the strap. Then we have, of course, his Uzi. And it's a decent Uzi. It's not the best in the line, not the worst in the line. Might even be a holdover from before this line because it's so early. And then we have his knife. And last but not least, we have his pistol. So, looking at overall score, or, you know, we'll go through his scores now. He ranks an 8 out of 10 for fidelity because he is so faithful to the original, but he also has differences like being gray instead of black, having spots of color. His quality, though, he only ranks a 5 out of 10 because he's about as old of a mold as you can get in the modern line. And so his articulation and sculpt are... They, they don't really stand up to more modern quality like a 2020s retro figure or even a 50th anniversary figure or even really a Pursuit of Cobra figure. Okay, so for his accessories... They do get a 10 out of 10 for fidelity because he has the Uzi and the pouch that match the original. They get an 8 out of 10 for quality, and a lot of that is the pouch. It is, in my opinion, a very high quality accessory that stands up to anything that has come out since. So their average is a 9, and his overall average is a 7.5. So he is slightly above average. He, and a lot of that is to do with the high fidelity score. If not for that, he'd probably be an average or even slightly below average because of the lower quality score due to his age. So he's a decent figure, and if you want one that is very faithful to the original while still being his own figure, you could do a lot worse. Now let's talk about version 30 from 2008. He came out in wave one of the carded figures. He was available either on a card with the 25th anniversary logo or one with the comic book logo that designated it was based on a comic book design. Now, since we just went over this mold in detail for version 28, I'm not going to do that here. I will just point out the major differences and how they compare with the vintage. So, the biggest difference is that he's pretty much all black. I say pretty much because there is some silver around his goggles and on the buckles on his legs. Uh, at least going by the picture on yojo.com. Um, other pictures, it's harder to tell, but that's what we're going with. And that is what we're using for this section because I do not own this figure. His accessories are also all black, matching the vintage. And just while we're here, if we look at the waist, you can see the updated waist piece that I mentioned with the much slimmer crotch that allows for more range of motion for his hips. So, the only score that's changing is his fidelity. He gets a 9 out of 10. His quality score is still a 5, and his overall accessories average is still a 9. Therefore, his overall is an 8.0. So, 
His score has improved just a bit by being more faithful in color to the vintage, um, but still held down by those same articulation and sculpting issues. But overall, if this is the mold you want, this is the most accurate figure you can go for. Now we move on to a new chapter. This is figures that share the same entire mold as the 2007 version 28, but have major variances in color or design from the vintage. So we start with version 31 from 2008 from the comic pack for issue number 21 of the vintage Real American Hero series. This pack contained two figures and a reprint of that issue. The figures were this Snake Eyes and a Storm Shadow. The intent was that these figures more closely matched the comic book coloring and style. So this Snake Eyes is a kind of dark blue rather than black with various details like pouches and his knife sheath and straps in black and his goggles in silver. Otherwise, he is, as I said, the same mold. So, for scores, for Fidelity, he rates a 5 because he's clearly not a close match to the vintage in terms of color. So, that added to the same scores as previously, his quality score 5, accessory score of 9, his overall average is a 6.5. You know, he's you know, pretty low if what you're looking for is something accurate to the vintage character, uh, or the vintage toy design, I should say. Let's talk about version 33 from the 2008 Target exclusive Snake Eyes vs. Red Ninja box set. This set contained this Snake Eyes, three Red Ninjas, and a Red Ninja leader. Now, again, he shares the mold with the 2007 version 28, but his colors are vastly different than the vintage that that mold is inspired by. It is not, you can't even say it's just a take on that design, but seen through the lens of a different medium, like you know the one based on the comic book. This is just a new design. So for his upper half, he is kind of a dark blue with lighter blue at the cuffs and collar, silver goggles, and black pouches and straps. In his lower half, he has green trousers, black boots, black knife sheath, pouch, straps, and silver buckles and device. So, yeah, he's very different, and his scores will reflect that. For Fidelity, he rates a 4. For his quality, he's still a 5. Uh, same issues with old sculpt and old articulation. For his accessories, I do have to give them new scores, because though he comes with several accessories, the only one that matches the vintage in this case is the Uzi. He no longer has the uh, explosives pouch. And without the explosive pouch... Bumping up that score, his accessory score then is only a 5 for Fidelity, um, because he only has one of them, so, you know, 50%, and it's only a 5 for quality, because that Uzi, as I said before, is not one of the best in the line, and there are much better sculpted, more realistic Uzis that come later. So his overall uh, accessory score is a 5, and his overall score is also a 5, so... He's decidedly average. Uh, and if you're looking for a one figure to match the 1982-1983 vintage for your collection, this is not it. So the final figure of the full mold usage section is version 36 from the 2008 DVD Battles Pack, set one. This was the one that contained the Mass Device DVD, and it had four figures. It had this Snake Eyes with a timber. It had a Cobra Trooper, a Baroness in a red diver suit, and a Stalker with the Jump Jet Pack. So this figure, while well, it shares the mold with version 28, 
The color is a kind of light bluish gray with clear red in the upper arms and the boots and on the face and bare hands with black cuffs and a gray knife sheath. So for Fidelity, he only rates a four because it's the same basic mold design as, you know, the vintage figure, but otherwise is pretty different. For accessories, he doesn't come with any of the vintage figure's accessories, no satchel, no Uzi, so he rates a zero there. So overall, his score is a 4.5. If you like cartoon-inspired figures, you would enjoy him, otherwise probably not so much.